is just fantastic. Captain's Log, Subdates 210721.2. We are manufacturing some rectal detonators that will then teleport into the protesters' bums. The plan is to create a very <clears throat> peaceful protest by turning it into an even more amazing firework display. I'm going to preface this video with the following statement. Where Tailed Feature said, I've changed my mind on the free market. You can all thank him for me noticing this topic. It's his fault because it then led me down a little bit of a rabbit hole, because I saw other tweets that led to other articles, and more tweets. When I call this too progressive for parents, I mean everyone really, because let's be honest here, there are limitations. So Tailed Feature retweeted something from All Well and Good. Within that retweet was an image, which led me to go find the article on The Guardian. Gender is a performance. Scotland's first drag school sells out. Now, when I first saw this, my initial thought was, are you attempting to trivialize drag to 11 to 18 year olds? Or are you trying to get those that might well be more inclined to go down that path to be more open and accepting about it? The image in the article itself includes drag queen Geordie D. Light. And this workshop takes place in Edinburgh which I, it took me a moment to remember, but I do vaguely recall in Glasgow at a Pride event, which is not the same as Edinburgh, of course. There were articles circulating that banned drag queens from performing at Pride events in case they offended trans people that were there. There is some truth to it. It's just depended on the drag queen because some are renowned TERFs or transphobes, whichever word is applicable. Natalie Deutsch said that you can use drag to explore anything you want to, and that drag is not limited to men dressed as women, with this course being open to anyone who wants to try it. It is an exploration of oneself, especially for young people at the upper end of high school. You mean secondary school, right? When your life is just beginning and you're thinking about who want to be. Gender is a performance after all. Oh, we're going down that rabbit hole, are we? I say this because at no point have I ever thought of my gender as a performance. Merely a, I'm just functioning, it's not a relevant factor in my life. If someone wants to misgender me, I couldn't care less. Hell, most of the people I see and talk to IRL away from the keyboard. I start with, hello beautiful, hello gorgeous, hello treacle, hello pudding, and continue with the builder's way of speaking to other people. Natalie Deutsch has devised a five-day course along with King Dolby as part of Dumfries Youth Theatre's summer program. Both grew up in the town, are trainee producers at the theatre and want to create opportunities for young people living in rural areas like the south of Scotland. The only reason it's rural and not built up is because it's too near the English border and they don't want to be near that. This program is supported by the community platform Big Burns Supper. Now, it offers summer courses in comedy, dance, costume design as well as the drag school for those aged 11 to 18. The course is sold out, with half the places taken up by girls, which did surprise me. But it has attracted criticism, particularly when the organisers initially proposed a similar daytime event for older primary school aged children. I wonder why. This has led to a significant number of online comments raising concerns about safeguarding and sexualizing children, with some referring to tropes about LGBTQ adults exploiting educational spaces to, air quotes, groom younger people. I left out the words false tropes. There are tropes for a reason. And I'll be honest, I have covered enough people within the halls of injustice who are teachers taking advantage of students. The perps themselves are mostly female. Hell, the more recent one is too. Go check it out, linked below. Graham Main, the chief executive of Big Burn Supper, has underlined that even for primary school children, there is an accepted and appropriate level of LGBT discussion within the curriculum, which is where many parents draw the line. And non-parents. Adults. Red-pilled? Is that it still? Do we still call people red-pilled? Do we still call them red-pilled? The point is, the line is, many would not see children exposed to any of this until they reach a certain age. Because of the backlash, the event offered for children aged 8 to 11 
has been reduced to a one-day LGBTQ youth space with discussions of heroes and icons along with the evolution of the Pride flag. King Dolby has said, and this will be the final statement from the article I'm citing, a lot of the complaints were from people who didn't understand what drag is. People have this idea that drag is offensive, but it's not. You can make fun of the ridiculous stereotypes. Drag kings with fake abs, drag queens who go incredibly feminine then drop their voice. And then there are drag artists who think gender is stupid. I'm going to be a robot or an alien. At this moment in time, I'm not entirely convinced that is a bit of reductio ad absurdum for drag queens, kings, or, well, robots and or aliens. And I don't think it actually comes down to what you think it comes down to. I think many parents believe this is not appropriate to teach children. Even in the more progressive areas of Scotland, they're vehemently against it. When it comes to these kind of subjects, or this kind of education, and what is and is not acceptable, the people you need to get approval from is not from your local governing body or council, it is from the parents. Their voices matter the most. If they don't want their children exposed to any of this, then you should respect that. You can now insert the argument of, ah yes, but children and informed decision. When can they make an informed decision on something like this? Really? If you're doing it as a bit of a novelty? Sure, but then you are by earlier mention trivialising drag, queens, kings, robots and or aliens. The second part of this video, the second part, concerns a summer event that has been going on since 1999. It's a book reading challenge for children. Over the six week summer break they get, the challenge is to read six books in six weeks. Well, Redbridge have taken this to a whole new level. In their library, they have encouraged children to read for the summer with costumes. Now, initially, I thought the people in the pictures were furries. Not entirely sure we want furries to be the ones teaching, and I say furry because of what I saw on one of the costumes. I'll show you the top half. Here it is. It looks fantastic. It's bright. It's eye-catching. The nipples are a bit meh. I mean, we don't really need them there for the costume. I mean, we're being realistic at the same time, right? The colours are totally realistic. But it's when you get to the waist that a problem arises and parents are naturally outraged. Because there's a rather large piece of um, prosthetic there, making this particular version of a monkey a tripod. Have you got it yet? There were other costumes, by the way, but this is the one people cottoned onto. Redbridge themselves have, on their Twitter, put out a little twit thread. One of two, two of two, and then three of three. Okay. During an event put on at the library, there was a performance by a carnival arts company called Vision. Unfortunately, one of the animal costumes was inappropriate, which we were not aware of at the time of booking. We deeply apologize for the offense caused. And the further statement will be made. This event was arranged by Vision and not Redbridge Council. Ah, not taking responsibility, I see. All right, you took responsibility and then dumped on it. You've also promised this will never happen again, which I firmly doubt. When it comes to vetting, screening, and other such related searches and blah, 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 you know, the usual bump that goes into making sure you've got the right people for the job, this was a cock up because you didn't pay attention. And I'm not entirely convinced. Having a rather large man dressed as a monkey with a massive prosthetic leg, with no knee, but a rather shiny tip, is an appropriate way of getting children to read a book, because their eyes aren't going to be drawn to the books, are they? They're going to be like, why is that leg there? Is it a peg leg? Why is it so straight? That guy looked less interested in actually helping kids learn to read and more interested in going yiffing. And Redbridge, this one falls at your feet. Because again, like everyone else, ideas are being pushed forward and you can claim it was an accident, but so many accidents keep happening that people are getting very sus about it. And I think you need to be honest with yourselves. Was it an accident? Or are you genuinely trying to push this kind of crap onto kids? Now, as we're done, I'd like to know what you think, so please do let me know in the comments down below. If at all interested, I'm streaming American Truck Simulator because I'm a boring, boring man on Twitch tonight. If I don't see you there, have a fantastic day and thank you all very much for listening.